see personally is the role of women um, and in civil society and achieving the goals that, we're, what, that we have for, for, North, for the Korean Peninsula. Okay, I have five reasons. Okay, good. Number one, I mean, this is even before the first, but I mean, hello, we make up half the world. I mean, put one eye over one eye, and what do you see? And then you put your hand on the other eye, and you see a totally different thing. So we are half the world's population, and women are disproportionately impacted by war and violence. We have a right to determine whether war or peace will prevail. But that's not even number one, okay? Number one, we know now, there have been countless studies now that show that when women are included in a peace process, not only does it actually lead to a peace agreement, I mean, if you look at the most um, significant study that looked at three decades of 40 peace processes, in all but one, there was a peace agreement when women were involved. And not only does it actually lead to a peace agreement, it actually leads to a durable one. It actually lasts for more than 15 years. So that's number one. Number two, we just do things differently. Um, women, we, uh, you know, and it's not that we, I don't wanna say like we're in this new world of gender identity and it's not that women are inherently more peaceful, but just because of the way that we've been socialized, um, we tend to do things differently. So I'm gonna give three examples. Like women, we tend, and this has been my experience, cause you know, Phil, you and I have been in this sphere for a long time and as you see in my bio, I've created a lot of organizations, but this is the first one where I've been strictly mostly working with just women. And we tend to work in horizontal networks, not in a hierarchical way. Number two, we um, build consensus faster. I'm telling you, the drama just gets put to the side. Um, number three, we're willing to cross lines. And we know that in the case of Liberia, in Ireland, and we're just willing to cross ethnic divisions, religious divisions, ideological divisions. I think that's a really powerful thing. And just three more quick ones. We take a holistic approach. Like Lema Gaboe said, when we look at the war on television, all we see is the militarized portion of this war. We don't talk about the millions of families that have been divided for three generations. We don't talk about how war and investment for war takes money away from social investment that could improve human rights in North Korea. So we take a holistic approach. Number four, because we are outsides of power, because we are not in the White House, because we are very few represented, but now more in Congress, we are not in the military, we have to think creatively. And that's what we women have historically for centuries have done. We have done sex strikes and we have crossed the DMZ to raise global awareness about the urgency to end this war. And lastly, this is kind of a new thing that I'm um, venturing into talking about. And I'm not um, a biologist, but I just love this. Has anybody heard who Tracy Blackmon is? She's the minister that brought people together in Ferguson in the aftermath of Michael Brown's shooting. And she shared this story with me about um, this medical doctor, Joyce Segrew. She writes about the, the slave syndrome, about the trauma. And she says, um, you know, that Joyce Segrew talks about how now science has shown that, you know, in, the, in, in moments of stress, right, when there's danger, um, we release these stress horm hormones, norepinephrine. And women and men both do that. But actually, women release something else too. We release oxytocin, which we know is the hormone that aids women in giving birth. It's the hormone that is about bonding. It's about nurturing. And so when women sit in circle together, we release oxytocin. And I think that's a powerful tool when you're sitting with somebody that you have tremendous baggage and differences with, and you're able to see each other's humanity and generate more compassion and love. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Those are so, good reasons, I would say. All right. <laughs> but look, I mean, one last thing. Sure, I mean, sure. We are in a historic moment. I mean, the electorate, look how many women, young women, women of color that we've elected to Congress. We are in a historic Me Too movement, and we have a moment now. This is an easy, low-hanging fruit. 
peace on the Korean Peninsula. That peace train has moved between North and South Korea. And now I think with more women in Congress and hopefully women that not just have a bold vision for US domestic politics, but for a new vision for US foreign policy that doesn't maintain a perpetual stance of war, that is my greatest hope. And I believe that peace on the Korean Peninsula is an easy win for this new Congress. Okay, so really quickly,